Do you hate being poor? Do you want to be rich like me? Well, go over to Messi Modding Services where you can buy GTA 5 modded accounts, GTA 5 money, and rank for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Check their website out in the link below. And if you're having doubts, just look at all these happy customers. Now some of you might remember my how to be a god video, and I think it's safe to say it did quite well. Now I spent about 40 maybe 50 hours total on this video, so any support or feedback would be greatly appreciated, but anyway, let's get into the video. Welcome to the ultimate PvP guide for GTA Online in 2021. So for the first part of this guide, I was showing you how to set up your console or PC for the best gaming experience. Now you may think it's a bit over the top for a game like GTA, but if you want the best chance of winning fights, you want as little holding you back as possible. Now an issue that plagues both consoles and even PCs is input delay. It's not really competitive if when you press a button it takes ages to respond, so I'm going to show you how to fix that, kinda. Consoles input delay is already terrible by nature, but there are a few things you can do to mitigate the issue. Firstly on your monitor or TV, you want to put it into game mode. Now once you've done that, you want to head over to the video settings in your console. Now unfortunately I don't have an Xbox so I can't show you what it's like, but I'd advise you to turn off HDR and turn off deep colour output as they both increase input delay a little bit. Also if you're using the PS4 Pro, I'd advise you to turn on boost mode which can be found in the system settings. This will give you an increased frame rate. Right, so if you don't have a PC, I'd advise you to just click away now because it's going to be quite long. There's a lot of things that you can do to decrease your input delay. First of all, if you've got an NVIDIA graphics card, right click and go to NVIDIA control panel. So you want to go to manage 3D settings and you want to copy these settings right here. Basically, you want everything off except for low latency mode, which you want on ultra and prefer maximum performance for power management mode. Also, you want to get this program called Timer Resolution DXC. Double click on it and you press maximum. It'll make your, it should make your input delay a little bit less. Now, if you join my Discord and under the links for software channel, you can find a link to download this. Also, for better performance, you want to go to background apps and settings and you want to turn them all off. This actually gave me about a 20 FPS improvement and every frame matters. And finally, before we end this segment, what's wrong with this picture? I'll give you a chance to look, and if you couldn't tell, it's this mouse room. It's got a massive mouse pad and there's hardly any room to move your mouse. So if your setup looks like this, make sure you move your keyboard out of the way and give yourself as much mouse room as possible, because trust me, it will help improve your aim a lot. So this segment will be talking about game settings and how to set up your game to make sure that you can play as best as you can. So firstly, I'm just going to go over my settings real quick, and if you want to copy them, you can. And if you want an explanation of what they do, just wait around for a few seconds and I'll explain what you need to pay attention to. Aim settings are mainly a preference, but I'll show you a few things to help you dial in the correct ones. Also, feel free to pause at any point during this. Now firstly, when it comes to settings, I have a high look around sensitivity. This means that if someone's behind me, I can quickly turn around and not have to worry about the game being slow. Next up, if you're playing on controller, I recommend using standard FPS 2. This makes R1 or RB the run button, so you don't have to keep having your finger on X or A, which frees up your thumb to use the joystick. This means you can run and aim at the same time. A setting you should probably turn off on console is in-game depth of field effects. Now this turns off the distracting blur that you can get when aiming in at something. It's especially useful in sniper fights, so it means that your enemy is constantly sharp and not blurry. Now on PC to turn off the in-game depth of field effects, it's in the graphics settings and it's called post effects. If the setting is on very high or ultra, you'll see a toggle to turn it on or off and it's off by default on normal or high. I recommend using normal because high, even with motion blur set to zero, there's still some motion blur which can add input delay, so I use normal. It makes the game look a little bit worse but I don't really care because it makes it feel so much better. Now something many people miss out is brightness. It doesn't really matter what you have it on, but sometimes too dark you won't be able to see people at night. So that's why I always have mine at the brightest it can be. It doesn't look as nice, but like I said before, I don't really care as long as it makes me play better. Now when it comes to camera settings, I usually have a rule where if the setting messes with my crosshair placement, then I usually have it turned off. I feel it helps me be more consistent with my aim, and I can usually be better in fights. First person combat roll is one of the things I turned off because I think it looks absolutely disgusting. Don't know about you, but look at this. For about half a second, you hardly have any idea what you're looking at, and it looks horrible. 
I also have my first person field of view on the highest it can be so I can see as much as possible at all times. I have first person auto level camera turned off as well because it means that I can control where I look rather than the game controlling it. As you can see with the before clip the game was constantly resetting my camera to look forwards whereas I don't like that. Now when it comes to PC vehicle sniping is a massive thing. As you can see with the settings I've got right now you can see really far and it's all really sharp. Now if I go down to post effect setting and turn that on ultra you can see what was really sharp is now kind of blurry. Now this is like in real life where you get a little bit of atmospheric blur, but it can be distracting so I like to turn it off. Also, at the moment my frame rate is about 140, and you can see I don't have any extended distance scaling or extended shadow distance. You'll notice as I start to crank it up, my video memory usage grows up massively, and also my frame rate drops by about 40, so it's now around 100 FPS. It means the buildings load in further away, but it also tanks your frame rate massively, so I like to turn that off. Now when it comes to PC, I like to use a really low sensitivity, around 400 dpi. I also have my keyboard and mouse look sensitivity at zero. This means it takes about 20 centimeters to do a 180, which is about 40 centimeters to do a 360, if you really care about that. Also the reason I like to use it is because at long distances it requires a lot of precision, and the high sensitivity makes it a little bit harder. Also with a low sense, I feel like I can be more precise with my flicks, like I can track a little bit better, and I'm more likely to hit headshots as I miss a headshot. <laughs> the thing is, with this sense, third person makes it a little bit hard. I have to pick up my mouse when I want to do a 360 or even a 180 sometimes. But then again, I don't mind that trade off because I use first person anyway, so it doesn't really affect me that much. Also, when it comes to mouse settings, my mouse input method is raw, which helps get rid of any mouse acceleration. Mouse look sensitivity is a zero because again, I don't really need my sense any higher. I like the sense it's at now. Mouse smoothing scale is zero because I've got a good mouse with a good sensor, so I don't really need to smooth any of it out. Find aim and control is off because that is mouse acceleration, and I prefer to not have mouse acceleration. It doesn't really make that much of a difference, but if you want to be a proper competitive shooter, even though it is GTA, I still have it off. And when it comes to keybinds, I basically use the GTA stock ones, except when it comes to a few guns. My Q button, as it's right next to the W key, so it's quick access, pulls out an RPG. My mouse forward button pulls out a sniper. Again, quick access, so I can easily spawn in, turn around, and pull out a sniper straight away. My tab button is my weapon wheel. Sometimes it can be quicker to pull out a gun with tab, as you can see, like that. I use my mouse backwards button as a sticky bomb so I can snipe. I'll quickly press the mouse backwards button and drop a sticky. Also, when it comes to sniping, I use left control, which is usually the crouch button in most games. I use that as zoom in for the sniper, and I use X to zoom out. This doesn't really matter. Some people use scroll wheel, but I prefer having zoom control on the keyboard rather than the mouse, as sometimes using the scroll wheel can affect your aim. <laughs> Now a lot of people overlook the outfit when it comes to PvP, so I don't think that it gives them that much help in a fight. While the help isn't as big as some others, it still helps, so I'm going to go through a few things to look out for. First of all, all helmets are bulletproof, so you don't need to always use a bulletproof helmet because they all do the same thing, they block a bullet to the head. But only one, two bullets to the head will still kill you. So, a good combat outfit should only really need two things. A helmet, so you don't get headshotted, and a colour scheme that helps you blend into your background. Now if any of you remember my original How To Be A God video, I'm going to show a clip from that where I'm making an outfit that follows these guidelines. Now this outfit is a black outfit which means you'll be harder to see at night. Now it's generally just a good outfit to have and also most of the items of clothing can be purchased in different colours so you can have different outfits for different locations and different times of day. So those are just a few outfits you can make for yourself, but to give you some inspiration I'm going to show you my favourites that I wear for PvP. Sniping is without a doubt the most prominent aspect of PvP in GTA Online. If you're a good sniper then you'll succeed at everything, except maybe life. As hardly any fights are done at AR range, so the sniper rifle is probably the most versatile in the game, because you can use it at far range, close range, you can use it to take out jets, cars, and basically anything. And I'm going to show you a few tips to help you get better at using it. 
First of all, when you're playing with a controller, the only way to change your sniper sensitivity is to change your third person aim sensitivity. Even if you play in first person, changing your first person sensitivity will only change how fast you can look around. But once you're aiming in, it goes to third person. You can try this for yourself. Where are your fingers? Now what some people still can't do is zoom in and move at the same time while sniping. And this is a regular PS4 controller, and the way that I do it is I use my thumb to move left and right, which is what most people do. And I also use my left index finger to zoom in as well, and this is what I do with my hand. I have like a claw, so some people from other games might know claw is like, like that, so it's like the opposite hand. Now what this means is I can move left and right, and also zoom in at the same time, also I can it's just my finger to move in and out as well. Now after probably about two hours of practice, you might be able to get this down. Now on an Xbox One controller, basically the same theory, except they do different things. Instead of my thumb moving me around, I use my thumb on the D-pad to zoom in, and I use my index finger to move around. Also while we're on the topic of controllers, I use a control freak, which raises my stick, which means the amount of force you have to use to move it a little bit is a lot less so you can be a lot more precise. As mentioned before, on mouse and keyboard I'd take zoom in and out off the scroll wheel and add it onto the keyboard. I use the control button so zooming in and out doesn't affect my aim. Now when you're ready to start practicing, go into director mode, get wanted and snipe those with cops. Once you feel comfortable with your sincerity, you can head over to my Discord server, where there's a channel called 1v1s. You can type how you want to 1v1, whether it's at the beach, at SIA, or if you want to do one shot roll or not. You can then find other people that want to improve too. Fighting real players and getting a lot of experience fighting them is how you can become better. On the Rockstar Games Social Club, you can also search for sniper death matches. Back in 2015, when I first started playing GTA, this is what I used to play all the time, and that's why I'm good today. If you search sniper vs sniper and scroll down, you can find good maps, and you can also press bookmark to add them to your game. Now when you're actually in the 1v1 there are a few things that you should try and do. First of all, as soon as you spawn in, you should look round, aim at the player and try and shoot them as fast as possible. The timing can take a while to get down, but once you get down and you manage to hit consistently, this will definitely help you in a 1v1. Quite a few people are also confused about how I manage to hit headshots all the time. Now the trick is, always aim at the head. If you ever aim at the body, you're not going to hear a headshot. That sounds obvious, but if you always aim at the head and keep practicing your timing, you'll get it down so you manage to hit headshots all the time. Now the way I'm going to word this next part sounds cheap, but you should try and spawn trap people. If you can shoot someone and kill them before they can turn around and aim at you, this will help massively. Another thing, make use of natural cover. In this clip I'm playing right now, I'm making use of this box that I'm strafing in and out of so this player finds it really hard to hit me. Now speaking of strafing, you should try and mix yours up as much as possible. Now what I mean by this is you don't want to move left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Because this makes you predictable to hit. However, if you try too hard on your strafe, it can be hard to shoot. So you've got to find a strafe that suits you and also doesn't mess up your aim. Sometimes if you get good enough, you can mix your strafes up depending on the type of player. Some players are good at shooting short strafes like this and some players are good at shooting long strafes like that. However, the best strafe is to mix up the two. You want to have short strafes and then maybe a long strafe and then short and then long. But to become a proper good sniper, you need to completely time your left stick with your right stick. Now what I mean is when you're strafing left, right, left, right, you flick just the right amount to correct for your movement. It's a hard concept to explain, but once you understand it, you become an insane sniper. So the best way that I can describe this is, if you start looking at a wall, or look at a fixed point on the wall, let's say, actually let's just say this car. So we want to aim at this badge. Now as you move left and right, you can see the badge obviously moves left and right, but what I'm trying to get at is you move left, but you flick the perfect amount to the right so the badge stays in the same position. It's hard to do when something's so close. It's better probably far away things like this light pole. We can flick and the light pole basically stays in the same position. However, once you're strafing, it gets to a point where you're spamming left and right like that. It can be hard to keep it in the same position because if you're going like that, it's easy. Just flick left, flick right, flick left, flick right. Kind of like that. But if you're doing it fast, you need to get the perfect timing right. So, uh... You're basically always on target. Now that was a really awful demonstration but I hope you get the point. A good point from someone in my comments is that always 1v1 someone better than you. Now you can't always guarantee on finding someone better than you, but still find good players to 1v1. If you keep finding noobs you're not going to improve. He also says study your opponent's strafe. Now this is true because most players don't change their strafe during a fight. So once you get their movement down and understand how they're going to move and you can predict it, then this will help you a lot.
This guy David brings up a good point as well, being confident. If you're confident, you'll play a lot better. Now it comes to sniping vehicles, there's only two tips that I can really give you. The first one is practice. The best way to do this is practicing on NPCs. You could also try playing sniper versus stunters or maps similar to those, but that's about all you can do. Now finally the second tip I can give you is imagine that GTA has bullet time. Not bullet drop, but bullet time. So depending on how fast the vehicle's moving you should aim a bit in front of it. This also depends on the direction the vehicle's going, but basically try and predict the path that they will go. You can see how far I have to aim in front in this clip. So the two factors that affect this are the distance they are away from you, also how fast they're going. So if they're going really fast and they're also far away from you, we'll have to aim really far in front of them. But once again, just practice and you'll get it down. Using rifles in GTA isn't as common as it used to be, but there's still a few tips that will help you win fights. First of all, if you're using assisted aim, use assisted aim full and not assisted aim limited. Assisted aim full means you can flick between different targets. This can help you kill two players faster than usual. So the difference between assisted aim full and assisted aim limited is with assisted aim full, by aiming at someone, you can quickly flick between targets using the stick. So if you get good at this, headshot, and then you can flick, quickly flick over, headshot, and quickly flick over and do it again. So it saves you from locking on, shooting, and then locking on to the other guy. So flick, flick. I didn't go for a second headshot there, because I suck. With assisted aim partial, you can see I'm going to lock on, and I'm flicking the stick, and it doesn't go to another player. So I've got to relock. Now, no matter how good you are at relocking, flicking would always be faster. Next, as many people might know, don't roll first. If you peek around the corner, don't roll until someone else does. If you roll first, they can just do another roll, and then by the time you back up, they can lock onto your head and headshot you. Also, while I'm on the topic of ARs, please don't start a debate on which input method is better, free aim or auto aim, because I don't really care, and as long as you're having fun, no one gives a shit. Next, crouch. So this is mainly useful in auto aim, but when someone's crouched, you can't just aim a bit up after locking onto headshot. Instead, you have to move the stick a bit to the left, and this can catch inexperienced players off guard. Also, if you combine this with moving to the right constantly, and not moving to the left, it can make it hard for players to headshot you, even in auto aim. Next up, GTA 5 is a third person game, so you should use that to your advantage. Peek around corners to see where players are before you start shooting at them. Now if you prefer to play free aim, I'd recommend strafing the head with your aim. Now this means constantly aim at the head and don't bother aiming at the body because bullets don't do enough damage. GTA 5 has a lot of ARs to choose from, so I ask you guys to vote which one you like the best and why. With an overwhelming victory, people prefer the special carbine, and I'm not surprised, it's a really good gun, it feels like it's got low recoil, and it just sounds nice. It's Frenisi, or however you say his name, brings up a good point about fire rate. I have a theory that if the fire rate is high, that it will benefit you in free aim because you're more likely to hit a headshot, because there's more bullets being sprayed. Lastly, if you're in free aim, I'd advise you to use a sniper as your main weapon and try and finish them off with an assault rifle. Now a sniper gets a player down to 1 HP, so if you can get him down to 1 HP, all it takes is one bullet to finish them off and because you're shooting an AR, it's really easy to hit. As you can see in some death matches, it's good to pre-fire walls because you can hit as soon as they run out. When playing free aim on console on controller, I'd recommend rolling first, even though I did say don't roll first. This can give you time to aim at your shot and it's kind of hard for the person to hit you, but that's not always the case, it's just a tip. Also in any lock on mode, it's good to try and shoot them while they're rolling. Players can't shoot while they're rolling, so if you can get a hit, or maybe you can kill them while they are, then this helps a lot. In GTA there are more guns than just rifles and snipers, so I'm going to show you which ones to keep in your inventory and which ones you should avoid. First of all, the combat MG. Imagine a special carbine with way more damage than the capability of carrying 200 bullets. 
While there's a bunch of recall, if you use the gun in first person or switch to the Mark II version then it should shoot just fine. The only Hellbringer is also a good alternative to this as it can shoot until you run out of ammo. When it comes to pistols, the AP pistol is good for shooting out of car windows and the heavy revolver is a good second, as with good aim and or BST you can one shot people with it. The marksman rifle is a fairly good long distance weapon to a heavy sniper, as it has generally good range and can be used to finish a player off at long distance when they're low due to the high fire rate. So what you can do with the controller is you can see a lot of PC players quickly switch in between marksman rifle and sniper to like, shoot, like fast reload and then go back. Now what you can do is you don't have to go to the weapon wheel and press the d-pad to move between the different uh, weapons. What you can do is what, what's what I've been doing for a few years now, is press L1 and you press the triggers. So this keeps your hands on the sticks, you don't have to go like that or do any hand gymnastics, you can just go like that really quick, you can press both of them either way. This is what I used to do back on PlayStation 4 when I used to play it all the time. You see, snipe and quick reload like that. Also it helps when you're sniping someone or snipe someone. It's hard to do on PC because the weapon wheel and controller is kind of messed up but you snipe someone, quickly switch to a marksman, it can quickly switch back as well. On PC I've just got it so I press the mouse forward better. And it switches between them so I shoot Now I make sure I aim out before I switch because as you can see there's a bit of a delay when using the sniper. So what you do is you shoot, aim out, switch, aim in. Like, didn't work then but I like that. Shotguns are rarely used anymore, however they can one shot someone to the head even if they've got a helmet on. This means that if you're off radar or someone doesn't expect such close combat, they can be quite effective. There's also the explosive shotgun which is ridiculously overpowered, but if you want to get a kill, hey, I'll go use it. The traditional RPG is a good start, it can carry 20 rockets and one shot a hydra or laser if you hit it just right. Fast reloading with the RPG is also better than the homing because you can do it while being aimed in, however the RPG is slower than the homing missile which makes it worse for PvP. Another advantage to the RPG is the reticle is just a singular dot so it's easier for precise aiming, however some monitors can give a central dot that can help with that. The RPG also has less range than the homing missile. I would use an RPG to take down a jet as they can outrun homing missiles, in beach or weapons as they can be spammed easily, and also in close combat as the slow speed and low range isn't that much of an issue. A quick side note, as long as none of you are lagging, if you've got BSD and body armor you can survive both a homing rocket and an RPG. As mentioned before, homing missiles are faster but do a little bit less damage. This means that it's better for fighting against other players especially when using the sniper to aim before switching. I would use the homing missile when trying to take down helicopters, as a lot of pilots aren't good enough to dodge missiles. I would also use the homing missile to fire other players in the city. This weapon is good at any range. The grenade launcher is another versatile weapon for short to medium range. Once you learn the angles and how far you can shoot it, it's really good at getting people that are hiding behind buildings. However, in this clip you can see there's something you need to take into account. The grenade launcher will automatically try and compensate for what you're aiming at so it hits the target, however this can mess up your shot. So if you learn that and take it into account, you can master the grenade launcher. This is also a really easy weapon to spam, which you can do it two ways. You can go into cover and spam press the right trigger to rapid fire grenades, or you can do it the regular method where you can switch between a sticky bomb and the launcher. When it comes to sticky bombs, these are good for a few reasons. First, you can car bomb, you can plant traps, and also you can blow yourself up, which is kind of try hardy, but it doesn't really matter, and it's still why they're useful. Grenades are useful for the same reason that the grenade launcher is. Instead of being used for medium long range, this is mainly used for short range, as you can throw them over rooftops and over fences. So 
when it comes to flying helicopters, other than dodging missiles, there's a few strats that you can do to help kill players better. Now, I'm not really that good at flying helicopters. I'm alright at flying the buzzard, but that's about it. But the strats that I use are trying to circle around your enemy. So let's pretend that this thing, this massive crane, is my enemy. Now what I'd do is I'd fly around it like this and try and keep my, I forgot what it's called, the reticle thing on it. Now if this was auto-aim, I want to make sure I fly a little bit further back so I don't get AR'd and also I don't want to fly too close because you can get home rocketed really easily because it can hit you with that lock on. As you can see in that clip, I was just circling around him. Another straight you can do is, let's pretend that this thing here, let's pretend that's a player. So what you can do is you can hover high up because you can only aim a certain amount up. What you can do is you can rock back then rock forwards using accelerated pull back and uh, decelerate to pull forwards. You can aim down and shoot. You can do it really steep, especially with the savage, because the savage can go basically vertically down. As you can see, we're actually in a real fight, and no matter how high he looks up, he can't shoot at me. And I can get him really easily. So using my incredibly high-tech simulation device, I'm going to show you how to dodge homing rockets. So let's say you're flying along in a straight direction. There's a guy here with the homing rocket. So what the homing rocket's going to do, it's going to fire up and it aims a little bit underneath. If you're flying directly towards them, you're going this way and the rocket's going this way. So it's going to be always a little bit underneath you. So if you're going straight towards the guy, you just want to keep flying straight forwards because hopefully the rocket should just go around and loop up and just go away. Now if you're flying away from the homing rocket and the rocket's going like this, it's definitely going to hit you in the back. As the rocket comes towards you, you want to tilt up and pull back. This will make the rocket come around and just miss you. You've got to make sure you pull up as high as you can go though, otherwise it will hit you. You can see what I mean by watching this clip here. And adjust my position so I don't get hit. You also kind of want to turn into the rocket like what I'm doing right now. You can also see that I'm switching from a first person to a third person view so I can watch the rocket and make sure I don't get hit. When shooting at other helicopters I like to fire homing rockets so they have to have something to dodge so they can't put all their effort into trying to kill me. Now I'm just going to show you a few clips of me getting kills with the buzzers so you can analyse them and see what I do to make sure I don't get hit with the homing rocket and also get the kill. So here we've got B11 after me. There's no way I win this fight because he's got cannons. Oh, ah, oh, yeah, no way. You can just dive bomb me and spray me. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the buildings to try and cover me. <laughs> buildings are a helicopter's best friend. So if you can use them well, which I'm not doing right now because I'm sticking really far away from them. I'm trying to... Ah, oh, he just rammed into me. But yeah, basically you use buildings. Another thing that some people don't know is, as you can see, I'm going to the view and I'm in this camera. I can't see any of the cockpit or anything. I just look around like this. Now the setting to turn that on is first person vehicle hood, as you can see. So the off inside the cockpit, I can see everything. If I change it, I can now see all of this and I don't have anything blocking my view. Now I prefer this, some people don't. Now only on PC there's this thing that you can do, where if you press the insert button, it instantly switches to that view. So you can spam it. Like no matter what view you're in, it goes straight to it. And this even works if you've got this mode turned on. So you can go to the hood and then you can instantly switch in and out by pressing insert. Now the button on controller is uh, you push in the right stick. And this gives you this much better view that I prefer. Now just remember this is for PC only so unfortunately people on console can't do this just yet. When it comes to other helicopters I don't really fly that much so I don't know which is good and which is bad. So I asked Gilly Master and I'm going to leave a playlist of his videos linked in the description so you can figure out which helicopter you want to buy. It's running. It's running. So I'm going to leave a timestamp on the screen right now for some information that I gave to the helicopters part 
that you should definitely watch before you watch this, in case you've skipped over that part. When it comes to jets, I'm not really the best person to talk about this, but I can give a few tips that do help me in free mode. First of all, if you're strafing someone on the ground, you don't want to take in a low angle like this. Because it's really easy for people to RPG you. You just have to shoot up and get a bit lucky with the timing. So what you want to do is you want to dive bomb like that and try and kill them and try and leave. <gasps> oh my god, that's nice. But you want to try and leave at a different angle each time. So you might come out at this angle and you turn around and then leave at that angle rather than just going down, spray and then go forwards like that. You should also notice that after I kill them I pull up to get ready for a second time. This means that as I come down, I can see the guy where he spawns and go for another strafe on him. Also notice that I use the rudders to move left and right to strafe the area. The reason why I want you to come out of a dive bomb in a different angle than what you come in at is even if you do dive bomb, you can still get RPG'd out. So coming out at a different angle makes it harder. So when it comes to dogfights, your right stick is the best friend. You can use it to look around, and you want to do sharp turns to try and cut people off while they're turning. It's hard to explain, but basically if someone's just going loop around like this, you want to cut in and try and spray them at a different angle. So I'm going to try and demonstrate it on paint. So say you've got a guy who's just doing a loop the loop He's just going around like that. So say player one is going this way. That's the enemy. The enemy's going around in this loop here. And if you're if you're following them behind, you won't be able to get an angle. So you just be you'll just keep going in the same direction. So what you want to do is you want to come off from this loop and go in your own different loop and try and cut him up. So by the time you're here, this intersection here is where you should meet, and this is what you should be trying to aim for. If not, he might change his path, and you've got to try and go in a different loop and try and cut him off again. When it comes to dodging home room rockets in a jet, either of the hydro or laser both do the same thing, just turn in like that and pull up with your left stick and basically do this until all the home rockets disappear because they can't hit you. Flying backwards isn't really that important but I'm going to show you how to do it anyway. So you want to pull up straight up like this and you want to pull out your landing gear, hold down the left trigger and tap the right trigger and then you need to correct for the movement and then you fly backwards like that and then if you want to get out of it just hold down the right trigger. Now the laser is definitely the best for dogfighting, it's got really tight maneuverability, however it's not really that strong, so against explosive snipes or something, I think it takes three bullets, so maybe two, and that's really not good enough for a military jet, so that's why the B-11 is quite useful. Also when it comes to flying a laser, hovering is a thing that you can do. Now, it's not really as effective as the Hydra, but you basically part the landing gear, hold down the left trigger, and just tap the right trigger. This will stop you from stalling, and make you go along really slow. And this can be good for landing in tight places. And also if you find yourself nose diving, like I'm about to do here, just let go oh shit, oh, let go of the left trigger and pull the right trigger, just to build your speed back up so you can get out of the nose dive. But the Hydra is my favourite free mode jet to use, because it's pretty fast, it's faster than a laser, in top speed at least. You can even do a speed glitch, which you do by going to hover mode, accelerating when you pull up like this, and decelerating when you pull down like that. And if you get the timing right, you can go pretty quick. So you can use the skills that you learn in the helicopter chapter, where you basically just hover and circle around them. It's really good for spawn trapping. And it's got quick maneuverability. It's even quicker than most helicopters that turn around like this. The hover mode also means you can land on buildings and get on snipe people. Now as you know, there's more than just the Hydra and Laser in GTA. And there's so many jets now that different jets have different purposes. I like the Hydra and the Laser because they're good all round, they're pretty quick, good at dogfighting, and they're really effective at taking people out on ground. However, their armour is pretty crap. Jets like the B-11, they have a less effective cannon, however they have more armour, and they have more effective missiles. Now when it comes to the other planes and how to use them, which ones are good and that, I'm not really the best person to talk about that. So I'm going to leave a link in the description to this Game Master playlist. It also has guides on armoured vehicles, cars, all that sort of stuff. Now if you're broken, you can't afford a jet, and you want to get a jet from the military base, you don't have to get a massive run up, and get top speed, and then maybe not even make it. What you want to do is this little dip, which I'm going to show you now. You just go right a little bit when you've got the ramp, you hit it and you can go really slow and still make it into the military base. I don't have a hangar in here, so I'm going to simulate what it's like for you guys where you get cops. And it'll take a while for the military guys to kick in. The best jet for you to get is in here. You can't get shot from the left and right sides, only shot by people that come in. And by the time you've got the jet, they're not going to be able to get you anyway. And when you are leaving the military base, stay low. If you go high, you will get shot out of the sky. You can see I'm staying low. I'm just going to skim the fence. But as soon as I go in here, I fly up, this jet 
comes after me. And you can't dodge this missile. Oh wait, maybe you can. But nine times out of ten, you will get hit by a missile or that jet's cannon. I'm going to show you a clip from one of my older videos, and I want you to take note of our communications. Tom, they're going to go for things above us, shoot. Oh shit, just, yeah, 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 Just I toggled see. above, he just toggled above. I see, I see, I see. He's going oh. for a jet, I think, so if you see any jet up there, shoot it. Oh, oh yeah, he's shooting grenade on just down. There's no jet, it's just two cargo bobs. So first of all, we notice that he's passive. Then we realise where he is, and then we realise what he might be doing while he's up there. Which could be either getting a Hydra or a Savage, if that's a helicopter spawn up there. And then I see there's two cargo bobs there, which means that he can't have had a jet or a Savage, as there's only two spawns up there. So this fight is a good example of map knowledge. As one, we know that there's a helicopter spawn up there, and two, we know that there's only two spawns up there. Now a lot of this knowledge just comes with time, I don't just sit down each day trying to memorise every single thing there is to know about GTA. But when I play, my mind isn't completely blank, I do think about what players could be doing, why they're there, why they're in certain positions, and try and see how I can combat that. When you die by cops or suicide, you can check the map and see where you're going to spawn. You can't do this if you die by a player, because you have to tap to respawn. But if you do suicide, quickly check where you're going to spawn. And this can give you a split second advantage so you know what weapon to pull out or if there's somewhere you can run to. This will prevent you from pulling out the wrong gun. As you can see, in all these clips, I pull out the right gun for the job. After we've just shown base clips, I think it's a good time to talk about Kex. Now if you're not a part of the GTA trial community, there's a chance that you don't know this term. But basically, people have made it so if you spawn trap someone by hitting them before they spawn, or while they're in spawn protection, and make them fly up into the air, that's classed as a Kek or something. This comes with game knowledge, and you can't expect a Kek every single spawn, every single time. But sometimes you can get a feeling for where players might spawn, as you can see in this clip, I shoot my grenade launcher, predict his spawn, and as soon as he spawns in, he's dead already. Now a similar thing happens in this clip, I predict this guy's spawn, I spray my rockets at it, and what do you know, they actually hit. When it comes to fighting at the beach, most of the spawns are in a straight line, so if you spam rockets in one direction, you might get lucky and hit. With base, there's only about 10 or so spawns that you really need to take note of, and the spawns are in relation to where you are on the map. So once again, using paint, I'm going to draw a map. So this is the beach line, we've got the sea here, let's say you're here, this is you, the dot or the X. So say the other player's here, and you kill him, so he's dead now, because he's far away. The chance of him spawning on you is very slim, so you can guess that he's going to spawn either here or here. However, if the player is here, and then you kill him, the chance of him spawning on you are more likely than if he's further away. So if you take this into account in any fights that you do, then the chances that you outplay people might be higher. Also, let's say you kill him here again, and he could either spawn here or he could spawn a little bit further away. What good players do is they'll fire grenade launches or something, because grenade launches take time to go into the air and aim to try and hit him on this spawn. And then once they've shot those grenade launches, they'll fire rockets around them because he might spawn anywhere around them so they fire rockets in circles or something so this way you've got two spawns covered gta is a game where people can invite their friends to help them fight whenever they want this means it's important to know how to fight multiple players at once even if your shooter isn't too good you can still make it out on top if you know how to position yourself but first of all there's a difference between camping and playing smart a smart player will try and find ways to kill someone while the camper will wait for someone to come to them you should be aggressive but not dumb Secondly, being on top of high ground is useful. You can control who you peek at and who you want to shoot. Be aware of rockets flying up, but make use of rolling back to roll out of the way. This might sound counterintuitive to what I just said about camping, but if there are multiple people going after you, this is a good way to get them without getting hit. This video we're playing right now is where I get a 4v1 by a bunch of tryhards, and I'm going to show you things that I did to make sure that I didn't get absolutely clapped. As you can see I was hiding behind the bush in this clip, I sniped the guy up top and then I decided to go out of cover and then kill the other guy down below. In this clip I made use of the ghosting feature, where you can make other players invisible as if they're impassive, so they can't kill you, so you can turn the fight from maybe a 4v1 into a 3v1, or maybe even into a 2v1. And here I'm hiding behind the hut at the end of the pier, and then spamming grenade launchers. I'm sitting close enough to the hut that they shouldn't be able to hit me with their grenade launchers, and they're sitting far enough away that I can kill them with mine. In this clip I'm sitting on a place where he wouldn't expect me to be, so I get the high ground and I can get an easy RPG shot off on him. 
Here I want you to focus on trying getting the jet out, so you can see I'm down a little bit so the players can't shoot at me. Throughout the fight I'd also be checking my map a bunch to make sure that there's no one in the facility waiting to hold behind me. If there are, there are a few places you can go and knowing where these places are can help save your life. Firstly, all the hangars in this airport are orbital cannon proof. As long as you're not waiting on the edge like here, if you go inside, you should be safe from an orbital cannon. You should also be safe from an orbital cannon in there. And in the parking garages over here, as long as you're not on the top. If you don't want to be safe, make sure you're a few stories down, because sometimes the orbital cannon can go through the roof. These are just a few locations inside the airport, but knowing where these places are on the map can help save you. Not many people know this, but on the airport, as you can see, I'm uh, just up here. These doors are openable. You can actually go in, and in this clip here, you can see I used it to take out two B-11s. So you can wait in here, you can, you're safe from fire, you're safe from grenades. Cops can come up here however, so if you've got cops, you will have to fend them off. But you should also be safe from an altar cannon, like all the way down here. I'm not sure about the roof, the ceiling isn't that high up, so you might be able to get cannoned, but down here you should be safe. As you can see, you can take these stairs up, and also right over there, and you can take them up as well. It's basically the same as there, just mirrored. This is where corridor that you can roll along, I'll show you right now. This rooftop is one of my favourites, it's just here on the map and you can get to it by either flying up or going up these stairs on the left and right. Say people are in the airport, you can easily peek and also you can get a good view of pretty much any side of the airport. You've got a good view of this, you've also got a good view of this. In fact, on top of all these hangars are pretty good spots, as it's a big open area so you can run around, you're less likely to fall off and it's hard for people to get up to and kill you in the back. When it comes to picking rooftops to snipe on, avoid ones where you've got big barriers like this because you can't really see over. Let's say someone's right there and you want to shoot him, you have to climb up and then if someone shoots a rocket at you, you're done for. Say you've wanted to do the rollback tactic, you try and roll back and you hardly roll back any distance and the rocket's going to hit you. So avoid rooftops like this. And a lot of them don't have this. I mean, this, this rooftop over here, this one's fine. Now I'm not going to bore you with good rooftops because this is the king of all good rooftops. It's not even the rooftop, it's like the roof middle or something. But you can wait here, you can shoot fine, you can see everything, you can see this direction, this direction, and that direction down there. And you've also got this place. This place is definitely my favourite part of the map. You can't get cannoned in here, you can't get sprayed from the top by a laser, and you can shoot out. A lot of people don't know about this place, so some people try and alter can you think you're on the roof, or spray the laser thinking you're on the roof, nor do they know you're in here, in the middle. Now you can't shoot out of this side, I don't understand, it's the same material as this side. But for some reason, you can't shoot out of this, so you've got to go around here, peek out of this maybe, or even go to the other side, or peek out of this maybe. You do have to watch out for rockets coming up, but if you're in the middle and you're just sniping like this, no one can basically get you. Make Wesley pay his taxes, then follow your moves all week on Twitter, probably make a gay nigga reconsider. You're now rocking with the best man, dress game down to the sex game, won't grab but the boy been blessed man. Now a tip that I've never seen anyone give, most of you might not even know this, but it's something that I figured out, basically, if you want to call a buzzard really quick and you want it to spawn in a certain place. So say you're fighting someone, you're here and they're around the corner and you want to get away from them. You want to run this way and you want to call a buzzard. So you run in, the buzzard is going to call behind you, as you can see, it's here. So you're going to run out into the open, potentially get shot, in fact you probably will get shot before you can get into it. Also if you want to call another buzzard, just leave, the CEO go back in and it's fine. So what you want to do, is you want to push in the right stick or C, oh, look the opposite way, and then call the buzzard, and it should be right in front of you. So that's what I do, I turn around and then call it, and then I should be fine. In the unfortunate position you've crashed your jet and you have to fly one wing. It's not that hard to actually get used to. You want to pull up when you're facing up and pull down when you're facing down. It basically stays in the path. If you want to turn, when you're facing sideways, pull up down 
Pull up. Pull down. So you can see on my minimap there's a jet fast approaching me. Now most tryhards or most people will be like, oh my god, there's a jet, what am I gonna do? But as you can see, it's just a Bezra. It's not even a jet with guns. So in case you want to be a bit of a troll or something, you can fly around with this and make people think you're in a jet. Now Los Santos does have an underground system. It's not too big, but it covers the main part of the city, like this area around here. And as you can see, at this part here, it converts from an underground to an overground or just a regular train system. So what you can do is you can just wait here if someone's in a facility, because for them, it'll just show you like a blip like this, like this guy, and they'll only know if they're spectating you. Now I use this to bait people into using all the cannons, as they can't tell whether I'm underground or overground. So for advanced free mode tips, I want you to turn off and allow spectators. Now this doesn't properly stop you from spectating you, but any normal person that doesn't know the game thoroughly, like you guys are going to know, they won't be able to spectate you to see where you are. Now unfortunately, to spectate anyone, no matter what they're doing, you have to have this facility. And you can't even just have the basic facility, you have to have the security room. Now a lot of people might have missed this because it is it's kind of useless for most things like you don't need it to do most of the things you want to do with the facility however the strike team thing here that's the only thing useful about this whole room so what you can do is you can place a strike team on anyone in the lobby and when you place a strike team on someone you go to observe you can see wherever they are <laughs> oh my god. But using the strike team is especially useful if someone's camping in an RC car. Like a lot of people when they camp in an RC car, they'll just hide in like a corner, like here. And they'll stay there until you're on radar or something. So what you can do is you can strike team them, place a marker, and then fly over in a laser or something, and then get them. Easy. So what you can do if you have two GTA accounts in the same lobby is you can get one account to spectate them using a strike team and the other account to go after them with a laser or a jet so you know where they are all the time. You can do this either by having a friend in the lobby sharing their screen and maybe telling you where they are or if you have two of the same consoles or systems next to each other and you can see both monitors to see what's happening. If you're far enough away where the buildings won't load in, use thermal to shoot through them. Also on consoles, the draw distance is really bad. Use thermal to see people that haven't rendered in properly. If you're having trouble seeing the little orange dot with the thermal because they're too far away, you can shoot rockets at their location and the dot should be more visible. Another tip, see this guy has just gone off radar. This is a really sad thing to do, but if you're fighting the tryhardiest of tryhards, so basically if you've got two screens, um, you want to have a clock up. So you can see all the time, maybe even use your phone, but you want to have a clock that has the seconds as well. So you could have that up on your second screen, or you could go to Google and type in clock. It doesn't even matter if it's a clock actually, it could be a timer. Now what you can do, is a lot of things in GTA revolve around timing. So, if I want to go ghost, you can see I have three minutes. So if you're on the other side and someone goes ghost to you, you would check this clock, you remember that time, you remember 20 seconds. So you can do whatever you want, camp or hide for three minutes from 20 seconds. So you wait for this timer to go to three minutes and 20 seconds, then you can see that that guy should be on the radar. If not, he's doing something, he's in a RC car, it can help you validate what he's doing. Another thing, say you kill someone, I'm going to EWO for the purpose of this demonstration. So say you kill someone, so after you kill someone, there's a cooldown for passive. And for this demonstration, I'm going to use the cooldown for kill yourself. Now if you remember this cooldown and how long it is, I think it's 2 minutes or 3 minutes or something. But you can test it for yourself. You have your clock open, and you remember this time. So if you want to go passive, straight or like straight after your time's done so you want to go out of passive back into passive or something you just wait for that timer to finish you go back into your game and you just keep an eye on the timer same with off radar off radar lasts for a minute so you 
take note of the two minutes, wait for it to go to three minutes, 17 seconds. And then you realize that guy should be on the radar. If not, he's doing some shady shit. And if you just have that open in the background and you want to make sure of a few things like people going ghost, it's many things, many things in the game you can use the timer for. And most of the time you, you never need to use it because most of the time people aren't that try hardy to feed to need to use it. But it just helps with your awareness. And if you know someone's off radar and how long they're going to be off the radar for, you can prepare yourself for attacks and stuff like that. Again, it's super tardy. Most of the time you don't need to use it, but at the advanced advanced level, it can help. Also, if you're a massive sweat and you want to use the orbs account all the time, you can set a timer, orbs account someone, wait for it to be 50 minutes, however long it's gone past, because sometimes tribes can sit in a lobby for ages. So you can have multiple cans, if you want to be as efficient as possible, you can straight away when it gets to like 15 minutes or something. So wait for it to go to 53 minutes, go back to your facility, and then your cannon's there waiting for you, so you don't have to wait in your facility, you can be out there fighting. I hate the auto cannon, but don't hate the player, I hate the game. Another thing people ask is, how do I one-shot GTA? So, let's go to speed test on that. It's my internet speed normally, it's pretty, pretty average. So 60 down, probably about like 20 up maybe. So if I go to upload a YouTube video, this is a big file, it's like a nine, nine gigabyte file. So yeah, it's uploaded, an hour, 12 minutes left. So that's like an, an hour of one shot. So we try it again. Ping's what important, 142. So, so if you don't know what's happening here, I basically made the connection to the server about 10 times as long, which is just about long enough for me to be able to one shot because that's how GTA servers work. Another thing I use is a VPN, which basically means that if I hit someone on GTA, that information is going to go all the way to America before it gets to the GTA servers rather than just go straight to GTA servers. Uh, well, that's who I put my VPN in America. But it's some people think this is unfair. It's not because it's a one shot both ways. No one has an advantage and I'm not teleporting around the, the map like a really laggy. It's literally just like one shot with a heavy sniper. That's about it. You can see in this video here, uh, this is with one shot on, if that's what you call it. And this guy's not teleporting around. I wasn't teleporting around for him. It's just one shot, heavy sniper, not unfair. And one shot for both of us as well. Another thing is solo public lobbies. These can be useful for just chilling, maybe grinding me. So I'm gonna show you how to do it now. So guys, if you're on PS4, you're gonna wanna go to network, set up internet connection, and it doesn't matter which you're on, ethernet, Wi-Fi, you can go on whichever one, go to custom, then just do the top one for all of these, except for MTU, and then you wanna change this to 800. And once you've got that, test your internet, it uh, should work fine. Then when you go into an online session, uh, it should be just you in that session. Which means you can do CEO work and stuff. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have an Xbox, so I can't show you how to do that. But if you just Google or search Xbox Solo Public Lobby, GTA 5 or something like that, you'll definitely find a tutorial. If you're on PC, go to resource, monitor, then go to network, it might take a while like mine did, and go to GTA, I'm just going to do it with Chrome because I can't be able to load GTA, and then just suspend it for like 10 seconds and then like unsuspend it, and then you should be in a solo session. And you can like CO, uh, MC work in solo sessions by the way. Next up, how to effectively dodge homing rockets while you're on ground. So if you watch like MetPro, uh, they do it quite a lot. This tip is basically you can use a flare gun to guide homing rockets away from you. So if you're in like a, a vehicle without any weapons, uh, yeah, just get your flare gun out and then hopefully you won't die. It also works if you're on ground, so if you, I don't know, if someone's in a buzzard trying to grief you or something, just uh, shoot your flare gun and hopefully they don't hit you. <laughs> you have to get the timing right though. You could also maybe try and get the home missile to turn around and hit them. I haven't seen it done before, but you never know what might happen. Next up, taking out helicopters with just a sniper. Okay, this tip is quite well known, but some people might not know it. Basically, uh, if you shoot the rotor of a helicopter, you can take it down a lot quicker than if you shoot the actual helicopter itself. And they just spin out uncontrollably. And it's quite a useful thing to know if you're getting followed by a helicopter. Just, just shoot the rotor out. There we go. Now, if you noticed, I wasn't shooting the actual rotor bit there. I was shooting the metal bit. If the helicopter was either way around, shooting the metal bit would work. But in this instance, you had to shoot the actual rotor.
Next up, I'm going to show you the teleport glitch. On this clip, I say you can do it on PC, but you can do it on console as well by disconnecting your controller while you're in the clouds. You just have to wait about 35 seconds. Now, this is a teleport glitch you can only do on PC, and basically how you do it is you need to turn on jobs on your map. Now, once you've done that, go to the map and go to a place where you want to teleport to and find the nearest job. Now, we're done. What you want to do is press space. This doesn't work on control, by the way. You press space to join the job. While you're in the clouds, you want to spam right click, and then when that message pops up, you press enter, and it will tell you to quit the job, and you should spawn where that job was. Now, you can also do this with custom jobs. So, if you make your own job, like I've made this one here called Maze Bank Spawn, which is on top of the Maze Bank. If I go to my map and go to the Maze Bank, you can see I have a job there. And all I have to do is do the same thing as before, press space, join it, spam right click, then when the message pops up, quit, and then I should be on top of the maze bank. And... Yeah, there we go. See, on top of the maze bank. Now finally I'm going to show you how to rocket spam in case you didn't already know. Okay, so if you're a tryhard, or like, no PvP a lot, you'll definitely know this trick. This is just a fast reload. Um, basically what you have to do is you have to shoot a good gun like an RPG switch to a sticky bomb or well, it works with any other weapon but sticky bomb means you switch fastest and then you switch back and it's reloaded for you so as you can see if you do it quick it's like this now a lot of people seem to think I'm hacking when I'm doing this in public so hopefully if you guys see this um, I'm not hacking this is just a tip and I'm also not using macros I'm using it legit it also works with the heavy sniper, which is quite useful. So if you need to reload in the middle of a fight, you can just quick switch. Now, welcome to the end. Thank you for watching. And if you've made it this far, comment something new you've learned from this video. Maybe drop a sub, a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.